Today, households hold all the wrong records. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to the latest post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. The Bank for International Settlements, or the BIS, has released the updated data today relating to household ratios to GDP and debt servicing ratios. And I want to discuss those figures because they are actually quite important to understand how Australia ranks relative to a whole bunch of other countries around the world when it comes to household debt. And frankly, the news is not particularly good. Let's look first of all at household debt to GDP. This is to June 2019, based on the BIS relative data. So we start with Germany, who comes in at under 60 and Hong Kong slightly higher. And it's interesting because, of course, Hong Kong has some of the highest house prices in the world. And then the Netherlands is sitting at around 100, having peaked at 120 back in 2009. Denmark peaked a little later and at a higher level, 140, and is now down below 120. Whereas Japan, the country with the negative interest rates and massive QE, is sitting below 60. New Zealand is at 94.6 whereas Spain is below 60. And you can see there how since the global financial crisis, the household debt to GDP ratio has dropped significantly. China is at 54.6. And that has really accelerated since 2005, as China's economy has evolved quite quickly. The United States is sitting at 75. And Switzerland is at 130.9. And in fact, that is the highest debt to GDP ratio reported this time around, 130.9. Canada is 100.8. And Australia is 119.3. So we are second behind Switzerland. And then we have a couple of other countries, including the United Kingdom at 84, and Ireland, who peaked massively in 2009 at just below 120, now sitting at 41.2. So it's interesting to see how this ratio can fall if an economy gets into difficulty. But the main takeout from this chart is that Australia is sitting at 119.3, just behind Switzerland, 130.9. And the higher the score, the greater the difficulty of servicing and repaying debt. So we are right off the scale relative to the average, which is sitting at around 78, and the major comparative economies around the world. Now, the other ratio that they report is the household debt servicing ratio, and again to June 2019, according to the BIS data. And here we can see that Australia comes in at 15.6. And in fact, the debt servicing ratio has been rising. It's actually been rising since 2016, despite the fact that interest rates are lower. And you can go back further and you can see that, in fact, there was some benefit from lower rates from 2011 onwards. But now the debt servicing ratio is rising. And that's explained by the larger mortgages households have and the fact that incomes have not risen at all, really, in real terms, since around 2012. Now we can compare that with the United States, which is at 7.8 and falling, or France, where it's pretty stacked at around 5, or Italy, even lower, and Spain, sitting below 5, Germany, again, in the around 5, and Japan just slightly higher than that. Belgium, again, a little higher. But Norway is just below us on the scale there, just above 15. Denmark, 
was much higher back in 2009. The ratio had got up to about 23, but now it's sitting at below 15. Sweden is sitting at about 12. United Kingdom is sitting at 8.9. The Netherlands is sitting just below us, having reached a higher ratio back in 2012. It was close to 18% then. And Canada comes in at 13.3. So on this particular ratio, we hold the record. We have the highest debt servicing ratio in the world. And that's a worry. Income is flat. We have very large debts. And we have a significant proportion of households with large mortgages. The point to take away from this chart is that despite lower interest rates, the debt servicing ratio has not improved. In fact, it's going in the wrong direction. And that signals more trouble ahead. So this is just another sounding of data which underscores once again that household debt and mortgages relative to GDP and relative to income are too high. And in fact, you could say that Australia is debted out. What could possibly go wrong? I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.